Slap 90s Wrestling Podcast. I'm your host, James Tunstone. Today, we're joined by Wrestling Royalty. She is the daughter of the legendary Tom Billington, a.k.a. the Dynamite Kid, and she's a member of the illustrious Smith, Hart, and Billington family. The one and only, the Dynamite Doe, Bronwyn Billington. How are you doing? I'm good. Thank you for having me, James. How are you? Uh, good, thanks. Uh, I seem to open every interview with this, but yeah, just trying to get over COVID. So I started this podcast during COVID. So every interview I've done is always like, oh, how's COVID been? So it's going to be weird when COVID actually passes over. I don't yeah. have to mention it no more. You say, How do I start? <laughs> Did you catch COVID yourself or are you just... No, I've been lucky. Uh, I've been very fortunate. I mean, it's just basic uh, common sense, I suppose. Just try and stay away from people, uh, keep the masks on. And yeah, fortunately, with my line of work, I'm outside all the time. So I'm able to be in like the fresh air and I'm away to, I can keep myself from people. So uh, it's not too bad. Uh, I know Canada's been hit pretty bad by it. Yeah, it's it's been a struggle. And I, I myself have been doing as many podcasts as I can as well, because it's something to do during the weekend. Um, I work full time. Luckily, I do get out of the house and work. But on the weekends, we're stuck at home pretty much. So it's been nice doing these podcasts. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, I suppose it's uh, it's just the one thing I can actually say from lockdown and COVID is one good thing is that like I started this show and like, yeah, about 10 months later, uh, like people I've interviewed, I can't believe it. So uh, it's been pretty good. But uh, it's been awesome. Thanks, COVID. That's awesome. Yeah, so like, yeah, I mean, I was just, well, basically, they said to me, I had to sit at home for three months. So I was like, what am I going to do for three months? So I thought, well, I like wrestling. I like to think I've got good knowledge of it. So I thought, yeah, go for it. And fortunately, it's been doing pretty well. Good. Cool. So I suppose we'll start at the beginning. So your earliest memories. So what's the earliest memories have you got of your father? My earliest memories, my dad was always on the road. Um, I think at that time he was working in Japan. So he'd be gone for long periods of time and then he would come home. And I can just remember family dinners and he would always come home with gifts. Um, You know, we would go up to the Hart House for Sunday dinners as a family. And we had a ring in our backyard. So he'd be wrestling with friends or training people. Um, Yeah, stuff like that are my earliest memories. Cool. And uh, you've got two more siblings, is that right? Uh, is it Malik and Amaris? Am I right? Merrick, Merrick and okay. Amaris. Yeah. And uh, so when was the first moment the three of you realized, like, oh, wow, our dad is actually famous? <laughs> I think it was probably when the internet started getting big. Um, so, I don't know, late 90s, maybe, when we finally had oh, a computer right. and you're able to go on Google and punch things in and or, or people would send it to you like did you know your dad like you know so it was yeah it was when the internet got big cool and i think i've heard this right in previous interviews you've done so your dad used to take you to the wwe shows and uh, i heard that um you spent a lot of time around miss elizabeth and match is that right yeah for some reason i think because they didn't have children of their own so they loved when all the kids would be with them maybe it was miss elizabeth uh, like me and my niece, or my niece, sorry, my cousin Jade, so that's Brett's daughter. We'd always be backstage yeah. with Miss Elizabeth. Um, yeah, they really took a liking to us. Cool. And uh, did you ever have any uh, photos took with uh, any of the other stars? Uh, I have quite a few photos, maybe not lots, like maybe four or five photos. Yeah. Cool. And uh, yeah, so I mean, I suppose one of the earliest matches we could speak about, and I would imagine you've gone back and watched it many times, was your father's series of matches with Tiger Mask. And uh, they've just become legendary and they're kind of the blueprint for every wrestler that's followed. So um, watching these matches back, like, I, I can imagine how amazed you are. I was like, wow, I can't believe my dad actually used to do this. Mm-hmm. I think it was on my Facebook just yesterday. It was saying, one of their matches was 40 years ago. I'm not sure which match it was, but I just saw that circulating on Facebook and I'm like, wow, 40 years ago. So that's older than I am. Yeah. And it's still like better than most wrestling today. So it's super impressive. And I'm very proud of that. Yeah. I mean, he, he was the pioneer for a lot of wrestling and an influence for a lot of wrestlers. And I mean, um, tragedy aside, like Chris Benoit, like, a lot of people labeled him the second coming of dynamites because he was so good in the ring and he was amazing and another guy who's actually making his return to wrestling now um davy richards i don't know if you've seen much of his work yes 
I haven't seen yeah. him lately. Is he still in Impact or? Uh, he actually retired for a bit. I think he became like a paramedic, but he's actually announced uh, a couple of weeks ago, actually, that he's returning to the ring. And uh, okay. yeah, and okay. whenever I watched him, I could see Shades of Dynamite. So um, I know he he did the um, what do you call it? He, the vo- the voiceover on Matter of Pride. All right. Seen that, so that was pretty cool. Awesome. Cool. So, yeah, so I suppose one of the things we'll t- talk about is the uh, legendary Heart House. So uh, I can imagine the many stories <laughs> going around there. Yeah. Um, so I was pretty young, of course. And like I said, we'd go there Sunday dinners and there would always be wrestling if it was the adults or the kids. Um, there was always so there was a ring outside on the, the property. So, and then there was the dungeon, of course. So there'd be kids playing in the ring and then people like adults down in the dungeon or vice versa. Uh, It was pretty cool. And yeah, lots and lots of people. If it was family, friends, wrestlers, uh, neighbors, whatever. It was always a good time there. (laughs) It was the uh, mischievous one out of the bunch of you. Was I? No. Uh, Yourself or... I think Georgia said to me it was Harry, but can you confirm that or was it someone else? (laughs) I would say Teddy was the the most one for sure. I was super shy growing up. I would always hide behind my mom's legs, like even at the Hart House. So um, like Stu Hart would always pull the girl's ponytails and be like hiding behind my mom's legs, like going to say hi to him because I knew he was going to pull my ponytail. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I was super shy and timid growing up. What was Stu like uh, at home? Because um, when we've seen him on camera, he's got that real stern look uh, and, you know, real serious look. But reading uh, Brett's book, which is an awesome book, um, like he seems like um, still that bit of sternness, but around the kids, he was a bit more soft, soft hearted. Uh, would you say that's what he was like? Stu? Yes, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. exactly what he was like. Good man, family man, always in the kitchen and. Or, you know, wrestling. Of course, he was always doing something wrestling related. <laughs> That's where you'd usually find him. Or he'd always be the head of the table and everyone's gathered around. He'd be telling stories. Cool. A really and cool what... picture at the Hart House. And my dad and Stu, they're in like the leather chairs. And they're just facing each other, having a deep conversation. I really love yeah. that. I heard that uh, Stu and your father was quite close. Yeah. Stu really loved my dad. Um, and even Helen loved us children. And... We're considered, we're not blood related to the hearts, but we're considered family. Um, there's a museum here in Calgary and Helen had all her grandchildren names written down and we're on that list. So that's just oh, how wow. we really are to that family. Awesome. And uh, yeah, and what was Dynamite like um, at home? Because obviously like me, like the only time I've ever seen him, obviously for, um, for the majority of people who's watched him was like on TV, but like... On TV, he was always this serious character and serious wrestler, which we loved him for it. But what was your best experiences with him, like, at home? Um, he, my dad and my mom had a really goofy relationship. My dad was just a big goof. So I can just pick <laughs> him laughing all the time and just being silly. And he was a really good dad to me. I'm the, the, the eldest. And his daughter, so his, like, baby girl, princess type, so he really spoiled me. He was always doing things that showed he really cared. Um, for my fifth birthday, he bought me a pony. That's one of my oh, favorite wow. stories. Like, that's just how much, you know, a girl asked for a pony. Well, my dad delivered. Uh, that's how much he loved and adored me. So that's pretty much our relationship. If it, Even when he had very little in the end, he would give mm-hmm. me whatever he could. And same yeah. to my siblings. Yeah, and... Uh... You're the mother and father, so I can imagine uh, she studied like how they met and that. Because uh, I think Brett said it in his book as well. Because uh, your, your mother Michelle and Julie, Brett's wife, are actually sisters. Is that right? That's right. Yeah. So Julie was dating Brett first. So my aunt Julie right. was dating, Brett, and they started all hanging out. Like my my dad was there and my mom. And Brett said to my dad, like, "You can't date her." I think because he looked at my mom as a younger sister, and she would only been sixteen at the time which right. wasn't about age, like that was totally normal back then, but yeah. <laughs> just like, no, you're not dating my little sister. That's how he treated it. So they actually started dating like behind everyone's back. <laughs> and they <laughs> so, ended up getting married and yeah, so. Cool. So, so uh, 
I just want to talk about um, him and Davey as well. So, I mean, we'll get to when they broke off later on, but what was the relationship between him and Davey like during the good times, I suppose you could say? Well, I was super young, of course, and they'd always be on the road together. So when they'd come home, uh, it didn't seem like they hung out as much. And throughout the, like a little bit later on, Davey and his family are always living in Florida. Like they'd come back and forth, Calgary, Florida. So, I mean, I think they had a good relationship at the time when they were tag team partners. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. I don't have yeah. a lot of memories just because they were always on the road. And then when they came home, they were just with their families. But um, I can remember Davey coming to my birthday party. I think it was my fourth birthday party and he brought Matilda. So I have some really awesome pictures of me in my birthday dress sitting on the floor with Matilda. Uh, that's one of my most fond memories of Davey. And I can remember family dinners. Um, of course, seeing pictures helps remember the memory. Yeah. But yeah, like Diana and Davey were over for dinner and Georgia wasn't even born yet. So I think it was just Harry and I, like little kids. But like that. <laughs> and uh, we heard there was a couple of pranksters on the road when they was touring so uh, what stories did they tell you about the pranks you know they didn't tell me any stories um i just you know hear it in interviews and stuff <laughs> <laughs> yeah cool and uh you mentioned uh george and harry so growing up obviously you mentioned they ended up moving to florida but when they did come back and i know that you and harry in particular is close now so what was your relationship with them growing up growing up we didn't like i said they were gone a lot or yeah. mainly in florida but uh, we got really close in our 20s i think when you're a teenager you're kind of you have your own life you have your friends or whatever you're into right and then as soon as you're kind of in your 20s um is when I, I formed a lot of my close relationships so we've been super close ever since then and i'm really thankful for that cool and uh, you mentioned how you related to uh, brett and these kids so i would imagine you was quite close to brett's kids as well yeah we grew up like siblings um our moms are best friends my mom actually followed julie when julie moved to calgary from Regina, my mom yeah. followed. That was Julie was like her mother growing up. So she was like, if you're going, I'm going. So they both came here together. And when their husbands were on the road wrestling, we were always together. And even yeah. like when my dad, when my parents divorced, my dad moved, we spent Christmas together like at their house, um, you know, all the holidays. So yeah, we've really grown up like siblings. Awesome. And uh, yeah, and uh... So I would imagine then, like, in Calgary, obviously, the Hart name itself and obviously the Billington and the uh, Smiths attract, like, royalty. So what was it like going to school, like, during this time? And I would imagine, that was you going to the same school with your cousins and that? And I would imagine, like, during school, you just attract, like, royalty. Um. So, and I, I told this story before, and I don't want to tell the same stories all the time, but right. uh, I was in kindergarten, and there was a um like a family barbecue and my dad was actually in town at that time so he came with my mom and you know he's probably wearing jeans and like his cowboy boots and just his big rip muscles and his aviators on and uh all the i guess like the next day all the kids were telling me you're a lucky duck that your dad's a wrestler like you're a lucky duck and i was just in kindergarten and i didn't understand so i went back home to my mom that day i'm like everyone says i look like a duck at school is that true <laughs> But um, so that's my earliest memory of anyone saying that I was lucky. But yeah, even still to this day, if people find out that I'm related to the hearts or who my dad is, they're like, are you kidding me? Yeah. Like, so yeah, we are like <laughs> semi royalty in Calgary. It's, it's fun. I like it. Awesome. Cool. And I would imagine then when um, your father was on the WWE TV as well. So I would imagine like growing up, just uh, watching your father and Davey Boy on TV along with Uncle Brett. So that must have been a bit of a surreal experience. Um, I can't really remember watching my dad on TV. Right. Uh, I don't think I ever watched him wrestle live. So when we'd go to those shows, I think I was backstage the whole time for some reason. Right. <laughs> um, I, I was so young, right? So yeah. But I, I can recall watching Brett wrestle because he wrestled later, obviously, like later 90s and stuff. I remember seeing him wrestle. Yeah. yeah. Cool. And uh, I suppose one of the things uh, I have to talk about, so the uh, Shaq Rougeau incident. So obviously you was really young, but mm -hmm. 
uh, in Brett's book, like it kind of to him, it felt like that not the confidence of your father um, when that incident happened. So, do you have any memories of when your father came back after this incident? I actually, I wouldn't have known what was going on at the time, but yeah, I can sure. just remember my dad not having teeth. And he had kind of like a retainer with the teeth that you could pull out. Right, and he would right. do funny jokes, like, kind of like, now I have teeth, now I don't. And I thought it was so funny. I thought my dad was like magic and that he could do that. <laughs> so thanks, Jacques Rougeau, for making a good memory. <laughs> <laughs> cool. And uh, so this was when your father and uh, Davy Boy left WWE and they'd done some tours across New Japan, uh, but they started working in stampede a lot as well so i suppose your father was a little bit more back at home so how did it feel like seeing your father more on a regular basis instead of him touring the country WWE? i can't really recall that to be honest i don't remember right. him being home as as often maybe i was super young yeah cool and uh eventually um what was yeah eventually um so with the incident and obviously you know steroids played the part but with the uh, incident after Shaq Rougeau, like what he done. So did you notice a change in your father afterwards? Like with say, for example, pain pills and that, and did you notice that, that changed his attitude a little bit? Um, I don't recall, cause I would have been so young um, if that that's what affected him, but I can just remember him when he'd be home from the road, he would be napping all the time. Right. So. Like he'd be napping on the couch and I was watching my cartoons and he would get up and he'd like have a cigarette, he might have a beer and then he'd go back to sleep. And I do remember like his pouch of pills. He was taking pills and maybe they made him tired and he's just resting his body. And my yeah. mom would say, you know, daddy's resting his body from work. And I'm like, okay. Like she tell me to be quiet. Sorry. Mind the cat. <laughs> um, yeah. So that's one of my memories of him is yeah. When he'd be home, he'd be resting a lot. Yeah, and I suppose it wasn't long after this, um, he, him and your mother uh, split up and he left. So I could imagine it was quite hard, like your father not being there anymore. So, like, how did it feel when that time happened? I think you're so young, you don't really realize. Mm. Uh, you know, mom, my mom just said, Mommy and Daddy fight a lot, like, Daddy's not coming back. I'm like, okay, like, just kind of carry on. But you don't really realize until later how it affects. Yeah. I know around 10, I started acting out in school. So it took me about three years, I think, to like really realize like daddy's not coming back. And I always had that dream that my parents would get back together, like every yeah. kid does. Um, so, yeah. Cool. And uh, you mentioned uh, Brett and Julian. He used to uh, go around to their place for the holidays and that. So what was Brett like at home? Because similar to uh, Dynamite, like I watched him on TV and, that, and I, I read his book, which I loved. So what was Brett like at home? Was he just like resting all the time or was he really active? He's a very active father. Um, something yeah. I was always so envious of my cousins that they got that their whole lives growing up. He'd be playing baseball, like have a baseball tournament going on with the kids. Um, they had a pool, they'd be swimming. They'd go for bike rides and that's still how he is to this day with his grandkids and children. So it was hard to watch, um, you know, not having my father grow up, but Brett did a lot of things too for me when my dad left. I'll never yeah. forget, yeah. it was my birthday, the year my dad left and he sent, like a clown came to my school, like this big, huge candy gram with balloons. And it said, the card was this big on the balloons and it said, happy birthday, love Brett. And I felt so special. So he did a lot of really sweet things for me um, when my dad left and I'll never forget it. He came to my Christmas concert as well that year at school. Oh, well. Awesome. Yeah. He's a He's... really great father. Do you still maintain a good relationship with Brett or has it changed since him and Julie uh, got divorced? I do. I'm best friends with Jade, so yeah. I see him not super often, but in the summer, like we'll go, you know, they'll have pool parties and barbecues. And so I see him and we have a good relationship. He's great to my daughter, my eldest daughter. She's always over there swimming. <laughs> awesome. And uh, so I've had another interview. So um, after this, uh, your place kind of became like a a home for wrestlers who was passing through and uh, I think I got this right the likes of Edge and Test would um, stop over was that right? That's right so that was my mom's house um, she was going to university to become a teacher after my dad left 
Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about the cat. It's okay. <laughs> and yeah, so we she didn't have a lot of money. She wasn't she was kind of waitressing on weekend waitressing part time. So we didn't yeah, have a lot yeah. of money. And she, so we were renting out our basement to wrestlers. Um, they were training with like Lance Storm and or no, I think Lance Storm was training. Sorry, they would they would have been training at the Hard House, Hard House, Brett's house. And so, yeah, Edge, Christian, Test all lived with us. And there would have been some other other guys as well. But those were the big names. Yeah. Any fun stories? Um, my best story would be with Test. He was really like a big brother to me. Yeah. He was I got the closest with him. The rest, I don't we weren't really super close. They were just you know, they'd sleep there and they'd go work out and they'd wrestle. But Test was like a big brother to me. So. I was getting into some trouble in junior high. Um, you know, I was starting to drink and stuff like that. And he, he came home and he was like, your eyes are so red. And he yeah, threw yeah. a big bottle of Isine at me. He's like, you're going to get busted. He's like, put this in your eyes right now. Your mom's going to catch you. And then I was just like, wow, he really cares about me. Like, like a big brother would. So I put yeah. these eye drops in and yeah, never got busted. <laughs> I always said he was such a lovely guy. It was so sad when he passed away so young. He was like, well, I think he was only just 10 30, like 32 or something. So such a yeah. sad day. Cause I always said he was meant to be a really nice guy. Yeah, he was a really nice guy. He would drive me to school. Oh, that was another thing. Cause I was heading to high school and there was talk about being froshed. I don't know if they do that over there, but yeah. um, he was like, oh, I'm going to come to the school and tell them like, they're not froshing you. And so I was like, yeah, these big wrestlers are going to come to school and like put you in your place. So I never did get froshed. They didn't actually end up coming, but um, he was willing to. <laughs> he could back it up as well. Like he was like six, seven, six, eight. So he's a big guy. Yeah. And he just had a little tiny white car. Like when he lived here, just a little cheap car just to get around. And he hardly fit in the thing, but he'd give me rides to school or pick me up. I loved him. Cool. I loved him. Yeah. Go cool. and uh, I suppose um, a few tragedies start happening now with the Hart family and you know the Smiths and the Billingtons. But um, at first, I suppose well, not so much a tragedy, but the Montreal screw job. So, um, I, like from what I can see, since it has affected Brett, like me being, I mean, Brett is my favorite wrestler of all time. It's no secret, and I noticed a change in him like after this incident. So, what was it like from? the home life perspective and obviously you mentioned your best friends with jade and you know your mother's sisters with julie so what was it like after this happened i just remember we couldn't go over for a while it was like they needed time to he was probably angry and just or upset you know and they didn't want people around so they needed time to just sort it out figure it out deal with the emotions because it was real and yep. they were dealing with it so that's all i really remember at that time cool yeah. And then, uh, like, couples, well, big sad moments. So, Owen, I mean, we haven't mentioned Owen yet, but I would imagine he had a lot of fun stories, but tragically, Owen fell and passed away. So, was you ever close to Owen these kids? Uh, no, I, w I wasn't around him very much, unfortunately. But, mm. uh, I mean, I, could, I knew that he was a lovely man, and uh, the world had lost a really big part of wrestling and as a father like just lovely human being yeah and uh, then not long after um, Davey boy passed away which it was it was big over here when we found out about it and you mentioned you're close to George and Harry so just such a horrible moment so how did you feel when you heard this news I just I felt so bad for my cousins uh, the most because they were so young and I can just remember, I can still remember George's face this day, till this day, like at the funeral, seeing her and she was just so heartbroken. Yeah. So, and that pain doesn't go away. I know I'm living with it now. I'm dealing with it now myself, but I'm just really happy that we were able to build a relationship throughout the years and, you know, keep that family connection. Yeah. And um, speaking about connections, so um, you reunited with your father. We just, uh, <laughs> so... How did it come about? I think George has said that she always felt you always had a connection to your father. Like, and um, would you say it was when David Boy passed, it was kind of made you thought, I, I really want to reunite with my father? Or how did that come about? It was actually when I became a mother. So I had my first right. daughter, and I was like, okay, now I feel whole. This is what I've been missing my whole life was to be a mom. 
And when she turned two, I would have been, sorry, how old was I when I had her? I was like 26. Oh, cool. Um, and I hadn't really traveled yet. Like I hadn't really lived, you know, like that part of my twenties or, or my adulthood. So yeah, I was 26. I'd gotten my passport. Like I now had a credit card and I just started feeling like I wasn't whole again. Mm -hmm. And I realized being a parent that it was one of my parents missing. Um, I, I wanted that reconnection and that's the time when Facebook came out. So I reconnected right. with my cousins over there. And so I got my credit card. I was like, yeah, I'm going to England. I was watching for a, for sales. I got a, a flight for $800. So that was pretty, that's pretty cheap. That's like the cheapest yeah. I've ever done. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I went and stayed with my cousin and I was like, I'm not sure if I'm going to have the balls to do it or not, but we'll see how I feel like on day two. So on day two, I was like, yeah, let's do it. I'm ready. Good. And I went, yeah. And uh, I mean, before we get to you reuniting with father, what was your thoughts on the uh, jolly old England? Uh, a bit different than it's what's portrayed in the movies. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was, I feel like I'm like a pampered, spoiled princess because I went to the pub the first night and the beer is warm. I'm like, what is this? <laughs> it should be cold. And then I wanted like fancy shots and they're like, we don't do that here. It's just straight like Zambuca or vodka. Yeah. So... Um, I, I think it's changed now because I don't think they had Jägermeister at the time and I was big into Jägermeister at that time Right. Yeah. and they didn't have Jägermeister but so at the bar I was doing I'm like well do you have sugar do you have lemons vodka okay you can make these lemon drops I don't know if you know what that is but so they were making me fancy shots that I would have in Canada at the bar oh we we had something it's called a suicide shot so okay. uh so, right, so you can either do it with vodka or you do it with absinthe. So I'm going way back now. So, uh, yeah. Back to my teenage years, which I absolutely miss. Um, so, yeah, so uh, shot of vodka, for example, a uh, bit of table salt and uh, a lemon. So basically what you would do, <laughs> you I would, like uh, yeah. instead of licking the salt, you would actually snort it up. <laughs> oh, okay. But, uh, FYI, I, I have never done drugs, so this yeah. is the highest I've probably been. Um, so yeah, you would snort the sugar up, drink the drink, and then instead of eating the lemon, you would actually have to squeeze it in your eyes. Oh my gosh. Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. yeah. I would be happy with you doing that. As an 18 year old, I just couldn't care less, so I just used to try yeah. it. But uh, yeah, a long time ago, uh, for, well, 14 years ago, wow. Um, it's so crazy, but um, it's great. Um, but yeah, um, so yeah, so finally reuniting with your father. So um, I can't even imagine what his reaction was. How long was it like during this time, like since you last saw him? Uh, since we actually saw each other, it was 15 years. Oh, wow. When I went to the door, I didn't think they would, maybe they wouldn't know who I am, but his wife mm. answered the door and she knew who I was immediately. So I don't know if I just looked the same as when I was younger or. Yeah. Um, and uh what was his first words i suppose you could say <laughs> um i was i was crying when i walked in and he was like just smiling he's like have a seat sit down and i was crying and he's like why are you crying and i was like because i haven't seen you for a really long time but he was like so happy that i stopped crying because i didn't want to seem like a baby so i just stopped and like all right it's cool and we just acted like nothing awesome and uh, I can imagine he just had so many stories to tell you as well. Like, um, I mean, what he's been doing for the past life. So what were some of the, your favorite stories he told you? You know, my dad was a man of little words. So I can't, I don't think he told me a lot of stories. We just really enjoyed each other's company. That sounds terrible. But I think British men are like that as well. They're very, very yeah. few on words. Oh, yeah, I've got no idea how I've got a podcast because uh, normally I'm like one word answers. So <laughs> how yeah. I've got a podcast is beyond me. Um, but so was this during the same time uh, Harry was touring over there as well? Was this separate? Um, not the first trip. That was my second trip. Well, it was the same year, though. It was 2013. Right. So that was my first time going. And then the second time when I went, I actually stayed at my dad's house because I wanted to spend like every waking moment with him. And that's when Harry was with WWE at the time. And so we saw each other and we went to the the local pub that our all of our parents have gone to and um, he came over and spent time with my dad and went to the wrestling. My dad didn't go to the wrestling, but. Hmm. When's the last time you've uh, been to England? 
the last time was 2000, um, was it 2013? 2013, yeah. 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 And uh, I suppose wrestling ran into the blood because you became a, um, a valet in wrestling as well. So um, was that something that was always planned for yourself? Or was it just something what just happened all of a sudden? It kind of just happened. Um, yeah, definitely wasn't planned. But although when I was younger and we'd play in the ring, there's video footage and I wish I could find it. I know it's somewhere, but me, Jade, and Dallas all playing in the ring. Dallas is Brett's son as well. He's yeah. the same age as me. And Dallas was like, oh, I'm Macho Man. And I was like, oh, I miss him. Look at this. And I don't I think Jade was Scary Sherry because she loved her. Yeah. I was always Miss Elizabeth. Like, I just idolized her. So maybe I had an idea that I was going to get into it one day. I don't know. Are you uh, surprised for not more of you has got into wrestling? Obviously, we've got... Um... Natalia and Harry and Teddy and uh, to a degree you can count TJ as part of the family well he is now because he's married to Natalia but and yourself but are you surprised like more of you uh, didn't get into wrestling like from the heart side? Um, I mean a lot of them did a lot of the cousins have wrestled and done indie shows and like just you know training like at Bruce's house like Bruce's kids and I know American Blade did a little bit of training with them as well nothing crazy but uh, it's a big family, so I guess I'm not too surprised or, or concerned about it. Also, we saw how hard it was growing up, like all these deaths and injuries. My dad winds up in a wheelchair, so even me, like for there was a period of time there I couldn't watch wrestling because my dad ended up in a wheelchair. I was just like, it's dangerous, I can't watch, and then, I don't know. It's just like it's in your blood and you just can't ignore it anymore, and that's when I got involved in wrestling as well. Would you ever let your kids uh, get into wrestling? <laughs> I would. Yeah. I think with, um, like, my eldest, she was doing gymnastics, and I was certain she was going to become a wrestler. I don't know anymore. But, you know, if you start them young, like, in gymnastics, then that's a perfect way to work your way up. Perfect oh, way. Yeah. Yep. yeah, I've got three sons, seven, four, and three. And uh, my middle boy, Sammy, he's the four-year-old. He looks like a wrestler from the 80s. He's got milky white curly hair, like down to his shoulders. Oh, that's so <laughs> he look, cute. He looks like Mr. Perfect, and he's tough, and he's strong. So I'm like, yeah, I reckon he's the athlete of the three. So, uh, yeah, maybe one day. Um, I, my sister's daughter is like that. Like, she was doing bum drops out of her crib since she was able to get herself up over it. And we're like, she's going to be a wrestler. <laughs> yeah. And uh, speaking of the Billingtons, so uh, your two cousins, uh, Mark yes. and Thomas, the Billington Bulldogs. I've, I mean, I, I've noticed, I started noticing some of their work because they're, they're still babies. I count them, uh, they're still really new. Um, but I started noticing them last year, and Thomas is a spitting image of your father. <laughs> it's I <know>. scary. <laughs> Not creepy, but it's just like, it's funny how genes work because my brother doesn't look that much like my dad. He does actually resemble my dad's dad. And yeah. my cousin Craig, but not my dad. But Thomas, my cousin, looks just like my dad. Yeah. It's funny and, uh, that way. Yep. Uh, how do you f feel about them uh, taking on the uh, mantle of the Billington Bulldogs? And uh, and I'm sad that, you know, they just started getting their momentum and then COVID happens and they haven't been wrestling. or I, I think they've been working out and training any way they can during this time. But, uh, yeah, I, I see shows are supposed to be starting up over there soon, so that's good. I'm just really eager to to see them live. I hope they can yeah. come over here as well. They really they want to come to Canada, and I'd love to walk them out to the ring. Oh yeah, that'd be great. And uh, I mean, that's my one regret. So um, I, I've never, even though I've been a wrestling fan my whole life, basically, I've I've never actually been to that many shows over here, and it's probably my one regret. So when things do start up again, I think that's something I would actually start doing is going to more of these shows and. Uh, yeah, and especially seeing yeah. your cousins because, yeah, I've got, I reckon they're going to do pretty damn well. Cause... I can't wait to watch their careers blossom. Yeah, and I mean, they are literally kids as well. So, um, yeah, it's going to be crazy how good Mark's they are. Too. I feel like everyone comments on Thomas because he looks just like my dad, but Mark, too, he deserves praise as well. So, they're oh, both yeah. very talented. Yeah, so it's it's great seeing them and carrying that Billington name going forward. So it's awesome. Uh, and yeah, recently we saw um, Davey Boy got inducted into Hall of Fame and uh, it's been a long wait. So how did you feel seeing uh, Davey Boy get inducted and seeing Harry and George uh, uh, induct him? 
I was super happy for him and uh, my cousins as well and Diana. Um, sad I couldn't be there. I probably wouldn't have been able to anyways just with having a baby recently and uh, she's almost two, but when they were supposed to originally be inducted, she would have been younger, but uh, it, it was such a good speech. I was so touched by Harry mentioning my dad. I just broke down crying. Like he didn't have to do that, you know, and I wasn't expecting it. So it meant a lot to me. And Harry and your father became close, um, didn't they? So um, what was Harry's uh, favorite memories of your father? Um, I think he enjoyed, because we watched some wrestling sh uh, matches with my dad when we were there. I brought over my laptop and uh, some wrestling DVDs and he would call every spot. So him and Harry were watching them. My dad just knew, he remembered everything, like a man of little words, but he knew everything about these matches. And he told Harry, I haven't watched these since I was in them. Because he, wow. yeah, he didn't know how to use a computer or suppose, a text yeah. message or he wasn't into, yeah, technology. But so watching those with him, that was a really cool moment. Yeah. And I mean, sadly, your father passed away on his 60th birthday. Um, but how important was it for yourself to be able to reconnect with him, like with the years, what you had with him before he passed away? I can imagine that meant so much to you. Yeah. And that's exactly why I did it. I didn't want to live with regret. Like I knew his health was going downhill and, um, you know, we're worlds apart and I just didn't want to live with regret. So I'm super thankful that I did that. And yeah, I'm, I have this story now to tell and it's beautiful. Yeah, uh, great story. And speaking of stories, and we mentioned it off camera, so um, he's going to be in the upcoming series of Dark Side of the Rings. So what was it like filming this documentary? I mean, the work they do is really great stuff. Um, so mm -hmm. how did it feel for yourself? And I, I would imagine your mother was part of it as well. So what was it like filming this? I don't know how much you're allowed to say, but what yeah. you can say. So it is a really well done show, and that's why we agreed to do it watched both seasons prior and we absolutely love that show. So we're like, yeah, absolutely. We will, we will film for my dad's episode. Um, yeah, I was almost like depressed leading up to filming it. I don't know. Just, it was just a lot of emotion. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Am I making the right decision? Because it was just, you know, it's called dark side of the ring. It's not all peaches and, you know, sunshine. So yeah. <laughs> rainbows and sunshine. So I, I didn't want to, portray my dad in a negative way I was really really nervous about that but I know that my story is mainly positive you know my story is about for forgiveness and reconnection so and then when we filmed it I had so much regret like I didn't say this I didn't say that yeah. um but the producers came back and they said they were so happy once they're putting it together they're so happy with our interviews so that made me feel better it's just yeah. one of those things until you see it you don't really know but I did the best I could, and I'm sure I'm going to be proud of it. And I know that they're going to make it look great. So, Yeah, it's going to be really interesting to watch. I mean, for long-time wrestling fans, especially UK and Canadian wrestling fans, it's uh, it's going to be a big deal. And I've always felt that, uh, you know, the UK and Canadian wrestling fans has always had that connection, uh, mainly due to the Hearts, the Smiths and the Billingtons. I feel like it's them three families what's brought us together i mean one of my favorite podcasts from candace jofa and the ring and they love me because i'm the uk guy and specifically okay. it, it's what we will talk about we'll talk about the hearts and that and yeah. we're just you know we're just united against the americans basically <laughs> i love it those are my it's family great. oh it's great so and it's been great and uh so i went to the internet and uh got you some uh, fan questions so yeah uh, are you ready for them i'm ready <laughs> awesome so on Twitter at UTT Rob asked, which of your father's matches is your favorite? Um, one of my favorites is my dad and Macho Man, because Macho Man's one of my all-time favorite wrestlers. Yeah. So that was in the wrestling wrestling classic. Uh, there was a 16-man tournament, and that was the second ever pay-per-view that WWF at the time had done. And uh, my dad wrestled three times, so it was the I think it was the second or third last match he wrestled Macho Man, and that was just really cool. Yeah, I think I actually came across that the other day and I watched it, and yeah, so good. <laughs> yeah, it was a short match. Uh, it was rushed, but like athletic, like the the athleticism in that match and the speed, and I loved it. Awesome. And then first Tiger Mask, Tiger Mask. I like old matches as well from World of Sport when my dad was sixteen years old. Yeah, 
seen any of those, but he was just a twig and like so talented already, or you knew he was going to be something big when you watch those. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, a lot of the uh, UK wrestlers I've spoke to mentioned how they watch your father in World of Sport and that, and how much of a influence uh, that he's been to them. And one wrestler in particular, uh, Joe Redman, who was part of WWE for a couple of years, but he, before COVID hit, he does a lot of the tours over in old Japan. And he says, like, they love me over there because they, they associate me with, uh, you know, the Bulldogs. So whenever, oh. they, whenever they see a UK guy, it always reminds me of the Bulldogs. And he's a pretty good in the ring. So it's yeah. great hearing that. Works for me. <laughs> good. Cool. So next question from on Twitter at Italian Habs Mike. What is the biggest mis- uh, misconception people had about your father? I think a lot of people use the word bitter mm-hmm. when they talk about my dad. Um, He was very bitter, and I just didn't see that of him. When I reconnected with him, I don't see bitter. I see he was a man that had too much pride, and, you know, he kind of hid away from people because of how he looked when once he started losing weight and he was in a wheelchair, and that was all his pride. I don't see bitter. He would never sit there and talk badly about Brett or Davey, at least to me. I'm sure he had his moments where he was bitter. We're all human, I'm sure. It was hard, you know, his injuries and everything. But um, I just, I don't see him as bitter. And I don't like that word used when people talk about him. Oh, yeah. And I mean, even Brett. So, I mean, obviously, after he left Canada, and I suppose he said he had a fallen out, Brett always said, like, he was the greatest wrestler I ever wrestled against. And when you think about the wrestlers Brett has wrestled, the likes of Shawn Michaels and Matchman and such, the fact that he said, you know, your father's top of the list, it shows you how great it was. So, to for your father, I can imagine, like, yeah, when he started losing weight and that, that bit of pride going, I would imagine that's how he felt. Yeah. And Oops. like my dad, I don't think he would have changed anything if he had given the opportunity to change his career path or his wrestling path. He wouldn't change a thing. So I think he knew, you know, what he had done, the choices he had made and kind of how he ended up it was all from his own decisions. And yeah. Cool. Cool. So we went over to you uh, at instagram so uh first question uh, i forgot to write down who uh asked it but uh you said who would win in the fight brett hart or billy hopeless <laughs> you have to educate me on who billy hopeless is <laughs> he is a singer from vancouver and i feel like my fiance probably asked that question <laughs> right <laughs> yeah he's my boy or sorry boyfriend fiance we just recently got engaged so i'm getting used to saying fiance oh congrats uh, yeah he's also a musician so billy hopeless is someone he knew from vancouver and he's a singer in a band right. yeah and, i think Brett would... kick his ass <laughs> awesome uh real cable guy asked uh did you ever improvise a um Oh, did you ever improvise in a pinch and use uh, Matilda as a pillow sometimes? I didn't. So like I mentioned, she was at my birthday party. Uh, when I, I think I, I'm pretty sure I turned four at that birthday party. It was four or five. And my mom said it was me and Jade and then Matilda was in the middle. We're sitting on the floor in our pretty dresses. And my mom said that the adults were right there to grab Matilda because I guess she wasn't very good with kids. Like she's a little bit bitey. I mean, yeah. obviously with the things you know, on the road. It was tough on her, so she wasn't great with the kids. Also, And uh, is this your fiancé, uh, Aaron Green? Oh, yeah, that's him. Yeah. All right, that's him. He's actually asked, asked a really great question. Which actor would be best suited to play your father in a Hollywood biopic? That's a great question. I have no idea, because I'm not very good at movies <laughs> and actors. I'd have to think about that one. I mean, for UK people, I suppose the obvious answer would be uh, Tom Hardy. I suppose he'd be the obvious answer. Um, he could do it really well. I don't know if you watched uh, Inception. Uh, he's in that. Uh, Pe- Peaky Blinders. I recommend it. <laughs> I've heard of it. It's popular. Yeah. Oh, he's I, in that. I would, of course, I want to say The Rock, but he's way too tall. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just about. Actually, Davey Richards. He's not really an actor, but. Yeah. Pretty... But similarities are there. Cool. Yeah. So, so yeah, before we leave, so you all uh, started doing some merchandise for your father, so like uh, some toys and stuff like that. Yeah, so we have our the t-shirts at Pro Wrestling Tees. That's been going for a few years. Um, but we have one a fig, a figure coming out with Junk Shop Dog. I'm not sure if you follow them on 
Twitter, or Instagram, but they're from Australia and they're coming out with a really cool uh, figure and some other sweet stuff that hasn't been announced yet, but I'm really excited about it. Cool. And before we sign off, uh, tell everyone where they can find you on social media. Yeah, so I'm on Instagram. It's just Bronwyn Jewel. And then Twitter is at DynamiteDoll84. Awesome. Well, Bronwyn, it's been an absolute pleasure speaking to you and uh, hearing you. stories about your father. It's been awesome, basically. And yeah, uh, really looking forward to the Dark Side of the Ring episode. Uh, can't wait for that and seeing the job yourself and your mother's done on it. And uh, yeah, really, really looking forward to it. And whenever you got free time, it'd be great to do this again one day. Absolutely. Thank you so much, James. It's been a pleasure. Go. Hey everyone, thanks for checking out this interview. Had a great time chatting to Bronwyn. And as for announcement for next week's interview, so uh, big guest next week, uh, this lady is the, the first lady of Ring of Honor, the one and only Maria Canellis bennett Had a great time chatting to Maria, we talked about both her runs in WWE, her first run as part of the Diva Search Contest, uh, what it was like joining WWE and being part of that time. Uh, Ashley Mazzaro, Candice Michelle, Trish Stratus, Lita, uh, her fun storyline with Santino Morella and the Playboy. So some really great stories. We talked about her leaving WWE the first time, joining Ring of Honor, meeting up with Mike, and then her return to WWE and how that second run didn't go exactly to plan. Talk about talent relations such as Johnny Ace and uh, Matt Carreno. So she does not hold back. So it's an interview you're really going to need to check out. She she even talks about Donald Trump and what he was like behind the scenes. So yeah, she holds nothing back. And yeah, and if you enjoyed this interview and you've been enjoying the content lately, it really does mean a lot if you hit that subscribe button, rather you on podcast form or on YouTube. Really does help the channel out. Same as if you can give us a five star rating or a like, give us a nice comment, always helps. And yeah, if you want to tell your friends about this and share with them, really does help the channel out. And the more the channel grows, the more recognizable the channel gets and means I can get some more guests and I promise you June's lineup is probably the biggest lineup I've had and if you've been a long time listener to the channel you know I've had some really big interviews so yeah June's lineup is looking massive so everyone thanks again for checking out and hopefully you come back for the next one bye